Good morning, uh, learners. Today we're going to look at factorization. Um, and as an introduction, I just want to go through um, the concept of factorization with you. Basically, on the one hand, you've got something called simplifying, which you guys are used to doing. So when we simplify, for example, you might have a sum like, say, 3p multiplied by, um, for example, 2p minus 1. And in this case, we have to use the distributive law to multiply this out. So we're going to say 3p multiplied by 2p. So that's equal to 6p squared. Remember, there's an invisible 1 and an invisible 1 over there. So we add that up. And then you've got 3p multiplied by negative 1. So it's a positive multiplied by negative gives us a negative. 3 multiplied by 1 equals 3, and then we're left with p. So this is if we're going to simplify. So in terms of algebraic language, it's important just for us to understand that. So that's like us doing the sum. Now with factorization, it's where they are giving us this particular answer over here. They're giving us this answer. So when it comes to factorization, It's as if we are starting with a answer. So they give us a sum and say factorize the following. So you've got 6p squared minus 3p. So what we have to do over here is the first type of factorization is called a common factor type of factorization. So what do we mean by common factor? It means we take out the highest common factor. So we first identify how many terms do we have. So we've got one, two terms. A term is separated by a plus or minus, but um, it means like, for example, if you look at this one on top, 3p multiplied by 2p minus 1. At this stage, this whole thing over here is one term because it's attached to a bracket. But in this case, you've got two terms. So what we do is we take out our the highest common factor of the number first. So the highest common factor between 6 and 3, remember when we speak about factors, the factors of 6, it's what's under it's what's under the 6. So the factors of 6 is 1, 2, 3, and 6, whereas the factors of 3 would be 1 and 3. So the highest common factor would therefore be 3, because that's the highest number that you'll find in both sets of factors. So we take out 3 as a common factor in terms of the numbers. When it comes to the variable, so in this case our variable is p, so your variable could be x or y or a or b, but in this case it's p. So that the, the highest common factor of p squared and p in this case would be p. So, in, so what do you notice? When it comes to the variable, you'll take the variable with the lowest degree. Remember we spoke about degrees, so the first, the, the invisible degree there is a 1. So we basically put the invisible, we don't have to write the 1 over there. And what we then do is we open the brackets. And now we take each term, so there's term 1 and term 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to take term 1 divided by the highest common factor. So that's 6p squared divided by 3p. Now you can either go and work it out on the side, for example, or you can try to do it directly from here. So what do I mean by that? Somewhere else on another page, on the side of the page, you write, you write down 6p squared, which is term 1, and you divide that by 3p. And what you'll notice, 6 divided by 3, which is 2, and you've got p squared divided by p, so remember there's an invisible 1 there. So when you divide, the law is it's going to be 2 minus 1, so that's p to the power of 1. But according to algebraic language, I don't have to write the 1 there. Then it's a negative divided. So that's I'm done with my first term. My, my second term technically is this whole term over here, including the sign. So now it's negative 3p divided by 3p. A negative divided by a positive is equal to a negative, And I've got a 1 over there. So that's basically my first example done. So what you'll notice is that this is exactly the same as that over there. 
I just wanted to show you guys that simplifying and factorization kind of go hand in hand. So that's how I'm going to be doing the explanation for this. So when it comes to the first type of factorization, common factor factorization, there's three variations of this and I'd like to go through examples of all three and then I'll give you guys some sums to do um, for, for that. So we're going to move on now. So we're still busy with factorization and we're going to look at type 1. We've started with type 1 already, which is where we basically take out the highest common factor. Factorization. So the second type of example in terms of the, 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 the common factor type of factorization is when we have brackets. So if we have a look at example 2, we've got say 3 multiplied by x plus 1 minus 4 multiplied by x plus 1. In this case over here, how many terms do you see? You'll see there's one term over there and there's another term over there. So there's two terms. So what we do over here is you'll notice that x plus 1 is our highest common factor. So we take out x plus 1 as our highest common factor and we do the same thing. This block here is always about taking term 1 divided by the highest common factor. Okay, in, this, in this case it's a negative divided by a positive is a negative and then it's basically term 2 divided by your highest common factor. That's that's how we that's how we're always going to do this particular sum. So let's have a look at that. So it's x plus one multiplied by its term one. So it's this whole term three. Once again, I'm doing a calculation at the bottom for you just so that you can see it clearly. So you've got three multiplied by x plus one divided by we've taken out the highest common factor of x minus x plus one. So we divide that by x plus 1. So that kind of cancels out now. So my answer is just going to be 3 over here. And then that's term 1 done. And then you've got the negative divided by a positive, which is equal to a negative. And same thing over here. It's 4 multiplied by x plus 1 divided by x plus 1. 4 multiplied by x plus 1 divided by x plus 1. So that kind of cancels out again. So I'm left with 4. So what you'll notice in this case over here is you've got 3 minus 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the number first. So our final answer is going to be is equal to 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So I don't have to write the negative there. And it's x plus 1. So that's my answer over there. Right. So that's the second type of example when it comes to common factor factorization. And I just want to have a look at the third type. And then in the next video, we'll give you some exercises to do. So if you have the following example over here, you've got 2 multiplied by x minus 1 minus 3 multiplied by 1 minus x. So what you'll notice in this case here, there you've got x minus 1, but here you've got 1 minus x. So what we could possibly do here is we'd, we'd like this to be x minus 1 as well. So I, wa I want us to just explore something before we go further. If we have a look at this particular expression over here, this term, if we were to multiply it out, it's, th it's th in terms of simplifying it, it's 3 multiplied, negative 3 multiplied by 1, so that gives us negative 3. Negative 3 multiplied by negative x is positive 3. Positive x, apologies. Positive x. So that answer there is x minus 3. Do you guys see that? Now I want us to see if we change that sign over there, so we change that to a positive 3, what you're going to notice now is that I'm allowed to change both of these signs and I'm allowed to swap them around. So that negative x becomes a positive x and the positive one becomes a negative one. You see that?
Why? Because remember I've got x minus 1 there, so I'd like x minus 1 over here. So when I multiply this out now, I've got um, just one mistake I made earlier. That's negative 3x times negative x. That gave us positive 3x. Apologies for that. So po positive 3 multiplied by x is positive 3x and positive 3 multiplied by negative 1 is negative 3. So what you'll notice is that you've got 3x minus 3 and here you've got 3x minus 3. So the, ex the purpose of that exercise was to show you that by changing that sign you're allowed to change both of these signs. So if we were to do that sum now I'd say you've got 2 multiplied by x minus 1 minus 3 multiplied by 1 minus x so our first step is to change that to x minus 1 as well. So that the only thing I need to do is change that positive, that negative to a positive. And we can then swap both of those around and it becomes x minus 1. So the negative x becomes positive x and the positive 1 becomes negative 1. And so now I can follow the similar step that I did earlier. I take out x minus 1 as a common factor and I'm left with 2 plus 3. Remember it's that whole expression there. Term 1 divided by my highest common factor is equal to 2 and then term 2 divided by my highest common factor is equal to 3. So my final answer for this one would be 5 multiplied by x minus 1. Right, so that is lesson 1 of factorization for grade 9. So this is uh, Mr. Falkvenia from Rockland Senior Secondary School in Mitchell's Plain.